Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show, built by Par Lumber. When it comes to big or small projects around the home, Tony and Corey have got the know-how and the answers to make your life just a bit easier. Here they are, your Weekend Warriors, Tony and Corey. You know, Tony, in the summertime, we think about water conservation. When we're in droughts, when we haven't seen rain in a while, it rains a lot here in the Pacific Northwest, but sometimes it just doesn't rain and we get these notifications on our phones that says, please, please be careful how you use water, right? Look, we live in the Pacific Northwest. We live in the, uh, the Willamette Valley. We have a lot of water here. This is what you're saying. But listen to this. Moderate to exceptional drought covers 27.9% of the United States, including Puerto Rico. Yeah. That is, I mean, 28% uh, of the United States experiences drought, and we just don't know what that's like here. Um, I, I feel like there's been some summers in my, you know, 40 years of being an adult that uh, I can remember we were like, oh, boy, we better conserve water. Yeah. I mean, I every so often, I feel like when, when we haven't had the snow packs and we haven't gotten the rain that we should have gotten. I mean, I've lived in Oregon for almost 20 years and I have only seen it a couple times where they've they told you not to water your grass or they've put restrictions on things, mostly with grass watering. But uh, I know in other parts of the country, like California, they've seen some pretty big droughts. But is it going to come and bite us like... An earthquake everyone's talking about that we have no experience with, and we keep saying, yeah, is that really going to happen? Oh, I don't know. Uh, but I tell you what, like I said, in some parts of the country, it's a pretty big deal. And, I mean, Arizona, for instance, they uh, they live in a desert, a literal desert. So water conservation is probably a pretty big deal to them. Yeah, and then yet they have these monsoons where water rushes across the entire state <laughs> and, you know, and everyone feels flooded. Yeah, well, there's no way to capture that water, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's crazy thing, but I'll tell you what. Water is one of the single most important and maybe the most important survival resource that we need. We, we have to have it. And what will we do if we don't? Well, I was, did you know that 97% of all of the earth's water is non-drinkable? It's, it's salt water? Salt water, right, right. So only 3% of all the water on earth is fresh. That, is, that seems like a, an unbelievable number, but obviously the oceans are huge. Yeah, they are huge. Um, but, but... There is technology, of course, that allows us to desalinate water, right? But it's expensive. It yeah, takes a lot of energy. Who's got a couple of million dollars sitting around so they can buy a desalinator? Billions, probably. I have no idea. All I know is this. Today, we're going to talk about ways that you can responsibly conserve water without really compromising your way of life. Absolutely. There's little things you can do. There's some bigger things that you can do. And we're going to start with this one. This is probably the easiest one that everybody can do. And honestly, you would want to do this anyway because it's going to save you money in the long run. Prevent leaks. And what I mean by that is you want to regularly check all of your things that use water from your appliances to your faucets, your toilets. Tony actually has a crazy story about a toilet running. And it cost you a ton of money, but you were able to negotiate that bill down, right? I did. Yeah. For, for you tell a, that story. Yeah. Well, for a one-time scenario, um, the the local jurisdiction will, in some cases, help you out, and which is, was the case for me. But basically, we had a part of the guts inside the tank of the toilet failed, and because of that, Water was running continuously into the bowl, from the tank into the bowl. Because, and ultimately down the drain. And then it would get up to a certain point, right? And then it would, yeah, it would go right down through the drain. So it would just keep, and then the tank would fill up. 
right? And then it would leak some more, and then the tank would fill up. And I But it was so low you really didn't notice it. I didn't really notice it. It's not a loud, particularly loud toilet, and so I didn't notice it. When I did finally notice that it was happening, I was like, oh, I noticed the toilet is running. That's weird. I wonder why that's happening. I, I determined why it was happening, and I thought, okay, I'm going to put that on my list of things that needs to be done, and I'm going to get the guts changed in that toilet tank. But you know what, Corey? I did not prioritize it right away and get it done right away, and I didn't know how long it had been happening. And lo and behold, we got the monthly water bill, and it was over $500. When it was normally what? 27? Holy cow. $500 just for water in one month. And so, of course, we got that leak fixed right away. And then we called the water people and we were like, man, I don't know what happened here. And they said, well, it looks like likely you had a an appliance that was leaking water. And they said, but when this happens, we will split the bill with you. So it ended up only costing us $250 instead of $500, which was nicer, but still yeah, 10 times what our bill normally would be. If you would have done this one little trick, you would have never have ran into that. And it's simple. What you do is you take a little bit of dye, blue dye maybe, red dye, and drop it into your tank. And then over a period of time, you wait and you go in and see if the color in your bowl has changed at all. If you see any of that food coloring or dye that you use in the bowl itself, then you have a slow leak. And if you have a slow leak, like Tony said, you can just go out and buy kits. You can replace all the guts for, what, under 20 bucks? Yeah, and it's not a hard project. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, you know, it's a commitment. It takes you an hour probably to get yeah. all that stuff pulled apart and put back in there like it's supposed to be. Absolutely. But it's worth doing it especially if ultimately your water bill is higher than it should be and that water is just getting wasted. Yep. Here's a couple more. Replace the washer hoses on your washing machine at least every five years. Because here's the thing. They are always under pressure. And when you run clothes in your washing machine, you turn it on, it depressurizes them. And then when it turns off, it pressurizes them more. And there's always this fluctuation of water pressure in a rubber hose. And they only last so long. And eventually, they burst. And when that happens, you're losing a bunch of water. Yeah. You're losing really? a bunch of water, and you probably are more than likely going to have a giant insurance claim. Yeah. A lot of damage inside the house it can be caused by that. So that makes absolutely great sense. I know that I have replaced the water supply lines on my washing machine and my sinks, and my toilets. Um, and so I'm sitting pretty right now. Yeah, I'm actually coming up on five years for mine. And I'll tell you what, mine are a giant pain in the butt because <laughs> the my washer and dryer, actually my dryer has a hose to it as well. What? Yeah, it has this steam thing. Oh, okay, so cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it works pretty nice. But they, the washer and dryer are built in to a, thing so i gotta take them completely out and the room that they're in is small and it's just a pain but if i don't do it it's gonna happen we're gonna go yeah. on vacation for a week and come back and our house is gonna be you know 50, a, a lot of people gallons. are out there listening to us right now and they're saying that is one in a million that's not gonna happen no it happens you know what else is one in a million your water heater failing happened to me <laughs> you know what else is one in a million your refrigerator supply line failing. Happened to me. Happened to Corey. I'm telling you, we are just normal guys <laughs> that that do, you know, home repair. But these things that happened to us did not happen because of anything we did. Uh, the, the water heater that failed in my house was the original water heater. And I built the house. I didn't build it myself. It got built by me. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, these are just things that happen. Sometimes yeah. they happen. And the way to avoid them is to be wary if it's been too long or something that should be regularly maintained that you have not maintenanced. That's how you're going to avoid these things. Yeah. Take it from us. So here's another thing. Here's one thing that you can do. You can go out and buy what's called leak detectors. They're these little devices that go under your appliances like your refrigerator, your dishwasher, your kitchen sink vanity in the bathroom. You can place these things wherever. 
You can buy them as kits. They come with a home base and then they talk to the home base and then it alerts you. It says, hey, uh, leak. Water is here, present, leak. And it notifies you right away and you can go turn it off. They also make mechanisms that attach to your water main. So if it detects a leak, it shuts it off automatically. That's kind of nice. And then there's other ones that connect to the water main that just report back to you. We actually have one of these. Uh, we, sh we share this little vacation house and nobody's there 75% of the time. So we actually turn the water off, but there's other things, sprinklers and whatnot that, that run occasionally. And we had the same situation. We had a sprinkler line burst and our water bill skyrocketed normally 50 bucks a month. And we got the bill and it was 400 and something dollars. Mm -hmm. And come to find out we had to dig it up and find the, the place, the, the where, place it where it was broken. leaking. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. So we ended up buying a kit that wasn't terribly expensive. I think it cost us like 150 bucks. And it connects. There's like this little sensor that goes on the water meter itself. And then that reports back to a home base station inside the house that's connected to the internet. And it notifies us if it detects a leak. Interesting. And okay. It's pretty accurate. I tell you what. It's very, because it knows. Like, right. It can tell if something has turned on and turned off. If you, if it runs the sprinklers and then they turn off, it knows that there's not a leak. It's pretty smart. That is interesting. Yeah, I love that. I, I definitely, I don't have sensors in, in those types of places, but I, it's something I want to do. I yeah, can tell no, you I that agree. right now. I lived through, like you said, my refrigerator line burst and I even heard it. I heard it behind the fridge, but it was a built-in refrigerator and it sounded like this uh, hu humming hiss sound yeah. that, that almost, it's basically, it sounded like my refrigerator motor or the condenser or something was just going bad. Mm -hmm. It kind of had just like this little whine to it and it wasn't, it it went on for like two or three days before I was like, what is going on here? And I tried to pull the refrigerator out of its hole and it was so wet that it had sunk down into the particle board, into the part it had melted the particle board. Couldn't even get it out of its yeah. hole. I had to take a pr pry bar, pry the thing up, pull it out only to realize it was spraying water everywhere. And it wasn't a ton of water. It was just enough. Yeah. But it ruined all my cabinets. And that, co that cost me eight months yeah. of remodel. That was a that was a major setback. Terrible, and absolutely. Tons terrible. of money as well. Yep. Uh, number two on the list is to install water efficient appliances. You can of course buy low flow toilets. You can get water saving washing machines, energy efficient dishwashers. You know, there's a lot of controversy on the next one, which is I'm just going to throw it in here is, is shower heads, mm -hmm. water efficient shower heads. I have used shower heads that spew such little water that it feels like you're not, it's, it feels like you're using an RV shower. You know, right. like the RV showers that, yeah. that have like one quarter of a gallon right. per hour. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a someone, a homeowner should be able to choose how much pressure they get in their shower. And that it shouldn't be something that they have to uh, suffer through. Well, there's these things called aerators that you can put in line. So you kind of screw it in, then you your shower head screws into that, and it introduces air into there, creating a better pressure. So you're using less water, but it's a stronger pressure. Interesting. So, I mean, there's ways around it. You know, there are jurisdictions around the country where you are required to use these lower GPM, gallons per minute toilets, these low flow toilets. And I remember... Back in the day when G low GPM toilets first came out, you remember those? Um, I do. I I mean, I remember toilets that had a, a, a flushing device that was two parts. One was um, a larger button and one was a smaller button. Oh, they still make those, yeah. And if you choose the smaller button, then that's for number one. And if you choose the larger button, that's for number, number two. two. I call it liquids and solids. Yeah, there you go. But back in the day, when they first came out, they were such terrible toilets that they could you couldn't they were constantly being clogged, and that is not the case anymore. They have designed these toilets that use air pressure and water, and it's crazy. Like the what 
kind of powerful flush you get on such little water anymore. Yeah. So if you've got an ancient toilet and that was your concern, I'd do it. Go for it. Buy the newer toilet. Because you remember the old toilets? The tanks on them were giant. Oh, yeah. It hasn't been that long ago since I replaced mine. I just replaced all three toilets yeah. in my house. With such with the low flow. All with brand new low flow toilets. And they yeah. work great. They do work great. I haven't had to plunge one since I replaced them all. I swear those old ones were like five gallons of flush. Yeah. Yeah, they were. They they did a good job <laughs> of getting, you know, getting the stuff down. But um, they definitely used a lot of water. Absolutely. What's the next one, Tom? Um, sh- you know, there's this, we talked about there's some things you can do that will n- not impact you financially, but maybe something that is just a choice that you make. I'm just going to throw this out there. I probably won't be doing this. This won't be the one way I choose to conserve water, but some of you might take shorter showers. You know, if uh, if... If you're trying to conserve water and use less water, if you're trying to reduce your water bill, if you're just trying to do the right thing, time your showers. If you normally take a shower just until you feel like you're good to go, maybe take a stopwatch, find out how long it takes you to actually just get all the stuff done. Go into the shower one time with a decision to make sure that everything gets done and we're gonna get out in the fastest time possible. That'll give you something to shoot for when you take your shower and you'll find that sometimes your showers are 30 or 35 or 40 when really what's necessary is five, 10 <laughs> or 15 or 20. I guess it depends on how much surface area you're cleaning. Sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is one way to do it. But in order to do that, you need to know how long... Does it take you to do the bare minimum? And once you know that, then you can hold yourself accountable. Uh, You know, you could also use the RV trick where you turn on the shower, you get, you know, wet. Oh, turn the water off. Turn the water off. Scrub up. Yeah, exactly. Lather up your hair, the shampoo, the soap. Get a little bit in your eyes. Turn the water back on. Screen a little bit. Turn the water back on. Yeah. That's the old RV trick. But, you know, in some places... I mean, I have a friend who's got a cabin in Lake Billy Chinook in Three Rivers there, and they're off, they're off grid there, completely off grid. Right, sure, sure. So they have a well, but their well has a tank, and it's it's pretty small. So they we have to do that when we go there. Turn the water off, lather up, turn it back on. Nice. And uh, we're cons- we have to conserve water. It's not an option. Got it. Uh, next one on the list is to collect rainwater. You can put out rain barrels. If you've never seen a rain barrel, it basically is a barrel. I mean, a lot of people use like ag, old ag, those plastic, sure. big plastic barrels. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a guy in Portland that used to make custom rain barrels that were surrounded in cedar. They look pretty nice. Uh, but you usually take it off of your downspout from your gutter and it flows in. And then you can use that water for watering your plants. And the thing about that is you have to be kind of careful because there are weird laws in certain jurisdictions that only allow you to collect so much. And then there's jurisdictions that don't allow rain barrels at all. They consider rain as a public resource and you're not allowed to keep it. So it's kind of weird. So I just say that because rain barrels, you see them online, you see how cool they are, and you just want to do it. But just make sure you, before you fork out all that cash, you're not going to get any trouble. Yeah, I have heard that uh, it, some jurisdictions require a um, a request, uh, like you have to get a permit to capture water, water oh, catchment. Really? Yeah, you need a permit for water catchment if it's over a certain Is that a amount. Word? Catchment? I believe catch is a word. Yes, sir. I'm looking it up. Um, so the other thing you can do when you're when you're watering your plants that you have around the house, uh, inside the house or outside the house, is to be responsible there as well. And you can do that by watering outside early in the morning or late at night so that you're avoiding water that dissipates or gets... What happens? What does it happen when this it evaporates? Hot, evaporates, yeah. 
Uh, I was losing looking for that word. I know ca- catchment. Uh, Sorry, I was looking it up. Catchment. It is a word. Yeah, you can avoid that. Um, what did you say? Evaporating? Evaporation. You can, it, <laughs> you can avoid the evaporation <laughs> of water during during the hottest part of the day by watering in the morning and at night. Also, if you want to get, if you want to again, this does this does uh. It's a way that you can save water, but it might encroach on your luxury a little bit. You can wash the dishes in your sink with the sink plugged and then use the water from the sink to water your plants. I mean, they might, if you, if you water your vegetables and fruits, they may come out tasting like Dawn. (laughs) <laughs> or <Dish soap>. or <laughs> dove <laughs> um but i i kid um yeah you know double using water using water twice your plants don't care if the water went across your hands or your dishes first right so you could use those to water your plants outside or your plants inside that don't bear fruit or yeah. vegetables that's right kind of, that's to an extreme that's for sure if you if you are using water to for other things after you've already used it for like like you said that's that's pretty extreme but in a situation where you need to conserve water it's a good tip yeah uh next one on the list this one's pretty easy you know what's funny is i actually grew up doing this a lot and it's sweeping sweeping the driveway sweeping the curbs you know it's I, so easy to get out the hose and i just know hose it off it is so much easier to get out the hose and hose it off and it's kind of satisfying. If I'm holding the hose or a pressure washer and I'm cleaning a surface using that uh, hose or pressure washer, it is very satisfying. It really is. Like extremely satisfying. But so is the sweep. Yeah, if, I don't if, know. You, if you know how to get a broom <laughs> and hold it properly. <laughs> my dad showed me how to hold a broom properly so you could walk with it and sweep, sweep. You do quick sweeping action. Quick. Interesting. Like sweep, 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 sweep. And it's it makes it really quick. It's easier for people who are shorter. Taller people oh. have to bend over more. Or we have to buy a broom with a really, really long handle so we don't have to That's bend over so, so much. So be it. Yeah. Uh, so real quick, I did look it up. There's a website called todayshomeowner.com. I don't know how accurate this is. It's just a website. Uh, It says it was updated last month. And rainwater harvesting is actually, there are regulations in Arkansas, California, Colorado, Georgia, Idaho, Idaho, Illinois, and, and Louisiana. Louisiana, yeah. And I know actually that there it's missing Oregon because there are regulations in Oregon, specifically in the city of Portland. Because when we talked to that rain barrel guy who makes those rain barrels here in Portland, yep, and he told us about it. He said you need to be careful. You can only have X amount of these before you're considered capturing too much rainwater. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. So, but there are actual states that encourage capturing rainwater. Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Hawaii, Indiana, and maybe Maryland. They Par- encourage you yeah. to harvest rainwater and use it. Interesting. Does Arizona also encourage you to harvest monsoon water? I just <laughs> wonder. Uh, it seems like something they might do. They, they do, do not, not encourage it. No. It says, in Arizona, there are bills that allow towns to generate funds for harvesting systems. Interesting. You'd think that they would want to have everybody do their part to handle the excess water that they get. Oh, shoot. There's two more pages. Sorry. Um, Oh, there's lots more. Yeah. Yeah. Nevada, they they actually regulate it. North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon. Oregon, yes. And page three, Texas, Utah, Virginia, in Washington. And Verm- and oh yeah, and Washington, that's right. It says in Washington it's legal to collect rainwater, but there are regulations. You must use the water on the property. It is collected on the system for collecting water must serve another purpose such as irrigation and each county has different rules. Uh so yeah, you got to you just got to anyway. That's all I said. You just got to look at the old regulations. Sometimes you could get in trouble. That's all I'm saying. Notable. Uh, next one on the list. This is an easy one. 
don't run the dishwasher until it's full. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't run your washing machine until it's full. Yeah. You know, if you really want to save money, I guess you could hand wash. Nobody wants to do that. So with one of those boards. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I said dishwasher. Um, <laughs> hand wash laundry. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it done. Oh, uh, yeah. You're old enough. <laughs> nice. Probably go down to the creek. Is that what you used to yeah, do? Yeah. Yeah. Down with the uh, with the crawdads. <laughs> where the, down where the crawdads sing. Turn off the tap. That's the next one up here. Turn off the faucet while you're brushing your teeth, while you're washing your face, while you're scrubbing the dishes. It's a simple habit, but it can save a considerable amount of water. Just like you said in the shower, jump in the shower, get wet, turn off the water, lather up, do the thing, rinse it off, get out. That's one thing we've always taught our kids. You know, with your toothbrush, put your toothpaste on there, wet it, brush your, turn it off, turn the faucet off, brush your teeth. Yeah. You know, when the kids are little, they just want to turn it on and sit there and play in the water, but you're just pouring it. It just makes no sense. Yep. I hear what you're saying. All right, Tony, the very last one on our list is... This one seems like it it doesn't belong, but it does, and it's insulate your pipes. And the reason this helps is because insulating your pipes helps hot water get to its final destination quicker. Okay. You're not starting off with cold pipes or colder water. The hot water coming from your hot water heater will make its way a lot faster reducing the amount of time you're waiting for hot water. I mean, most of these pipes, if I'm being honest, are in the walls and you won't be able to access them. Well, if they're in the walls, then they're probably insulated or at least in a conditioned space. But if you have them exposed under the house, which is pretty common, then that's where you can insulate them. We, uh, you know, Par Lumber Company, for example, sells pipe insulation in different diameters. It's the it kind of looks like a pool noodle. Um, they're about six feet long. It just slides. It's already got a slice in it and a hole in the middle. You just slide it right over your pipe. Yep. You get as many of those as you need. They're, they're not very expensive. And um, and you can insulate exposed pipe in the attic or in the crawl space. And uh, that can result in you not needing to run the water as long to get warm water to your faucet. Absolutely. And one thing to keep in mind, if you are doing that project, measure your pipes first. You know, you're going to go to the store and they're going to say, do you have half inch, three quarter inch, one inch? All of those are viable pipe sizes. One inch, not so common, but three quarter inch and half inch. Absolutely. Depending on how your house is plumbed. Yep. So check that out, make your list and then go. Absolutely. I'm really glad we talked about this. This, of course, has been just another part of our conservation series, our um, energy efficient sort of green series. And um, there is more to come, so um, stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll be talking about some more stuff next week. And uh, anyway, if you found anything useful in this podcast, send it to your friend. If they need to learn how to conserve some water, yeah, make sure you uh, hit the, uh, what's that little bell on there to to subscribe to our show. Notification. Yeah, we put a show out every week. Mm -hmm. So you can find us on Instagram at WW Home Show, Facebook. YouTube at WW Home Show and also at R Lumber. Yes, sir. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. We hope you got something that you can use. We'll see you next time.